Hi, my name is Michael Swartz. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to create a tileable hexagon texture, or hex tile, that we could use to create honeycomb and insect eye textures inside of a 3D application such as Maya. Inside of Illustrator, we're going to create a polygon. And if you click and hold on the rectangle tool and select polygon tool, we can click one time in the middle of our document. I'm going to just uh, find the center point of our document and put it right in the middle and click one time. And that brings up this dialog box. And I'm going to leave this at the defaults, 50 point by six sides. Click OK. Next step is we need to add a gradient. I want to make a repeatable tile that could be used as a bump map for an insect eye in Maya. And I want to have the center part be slightly brighter than the outside edge of this. So it has a sort of re uh, raised relief or embossing effect uh, on this texture. So I'm going to use a, a gradient to simulate that. So you can find the gradient options under the window gradient menu. So if you go to uh, window and then find gradient, in our situation, we're going to create a radial. And that should, by default, place it right exactly in the center, which is what we want. But this uh, gradient is a little too dark. I want to move this mid midpoint location slider to the right to about 80% or so. Let's do, let's just round it off so it's perfectly 80%. And then I'm going to click uh, right underneath this gradient slider, this ramp, and add a add a uh, color and now we can remove the black so I'm going to grab that black swatch and just drag it down and it goes away and then this point right here I'm going to drag that over to the right so now we have a nice gradient that could be used to simulate a 3d kind of embossing effect I'm going to zoom out here command one and Next step is to turn this into a repeatable pattern. So let's go to Object, and then go to Pattern, Make. And it's telling us it's going to put it into the Swatches panel for us. And if you need to edit it for any reason, you can double click on the swatch. It opened up this dialog box for us, this Pattern Options window. We can change this to a whole bunch of things. In our case, we want to um, set it up to be a hex by column. And then the next thing is to just choose how many copies you want to have it repeat. I'm going to leave it at five by five. That should be fine. And when you're done, click done up here at the top. So this tile is now inside of our swatches right over here. And we're going to create a rectangle shape and fill that rectangle with the tileable pattern we just made. And I want my rectangle to be the correct dimensions it should be um, matching the original shape that we've made here so if we select this original shape and look at the uh, the size and the scale values for it it's 100 points wide by 86.603 points high so i'm going to use the rectangle tool over here and click once and we'll make it uh, 100 points times one and a half so that would be 150 points and we can round it off to 87 points for the height. Click OK. Now it's stretched. It's using the gradient that we used previously. And we just need to change the fill pattern to be our honeycomb pattern that we just created. So we'll click on that over here in the swatches palette. And now it's updated this. If we zoom in close, though, you'll notice that it's using a stroke around the rectangle. We don't want that. Let's change the stroke to be zero points. And now we can click on this, copy it, and we'll go over to Photoshop now for the next step. Inside of Photoshop, we're just going to create a new document, and it should automatically have the correct width and height based on the contents in the clipboard. So we copied that shape from Illustrator. It's automatically plugged in the width and height for us. You can choose a, a background color. In this case, I'm just going to leave it as white. Let's click OK. Let's paste it, Command V. And let's use pixels for this. Click OK and hit Enter or Return. And it's been rasterized now as pixels. Now I'm going to use this uh, as a pattern maker inside of Photoshop. So we'll select All, Command A, and then go up to the Edit menu and select Define Pattern. And let's call this 
textile 01. Okay, so now we have a tileable pattern inside of the pattern library for Photoshop. If we make a new document, and let's make it, let's say, 1024 by 1024, and click OK, we can fill that entire canvas with our pattern. Let's go up to Edit, Fill, select Pattern from the drop down here, and then choose our pattern that we just created, which is right here, the hex tile. Click OK, and now we have a nice tileable texture that we can use in uh, Autodesk Maya as a bump map. But the tile does not need to be this large file. In fact, our tile is really only this large. So all I need to do is save this as a, a file texture and put it into the correct location for Maya to access as a tileable texture. And we can set up those repeating parameters inside of Maya directly. So let's change the mode to grayscale. And we don't need any of the layers, so we can choose Flatten in this case. And now let's File, Save As. And we'll call this, uh, let's use a Targa file format, and we'll call this Hex Tile 01. Okay, and I'll just put it on the desktop for now. Okay, so I have my project directory for Maya open right now. Um, I'm working on a Honeybee robotic honeybee project right now. And inside of the project directory, there's a folder called source images. This is where all of the imported images should go for Maya. And I made a folder here called iTextures. I'm gonna just drag my hex tile over to that folder. And now let's switch over to Maya. And here's just a very simple uh, series of spheres that we that I've twisted and bent to form the shape of a bee head. And I'm going to show you just quickly how to assign that uh, bump to a simple material inside of Maya. And the process should be similar in other 3D applications. The idea behind a bump is that the luminance or brightness of the bump map file uh, bends the normals. Normals are these uh, points that if you can actually view them in Maya, if you go to display polygons, face normals, and you can see that they're all facing and radiating outward. And these normals talk to the camera and they tell the camera what um, what is uh, facing the camera and what should be in, in uh, brighter and what should be in shadow and so on. And the bump map will actually bend these normals to simulate a, a perturbed surface uh, and add uh, the, the illusion that there's actually detail and um, additional modeling there, but there isn't, it's just a texture, it's a fake. So let's go to display, polygons, face normals, turn that off, and let's start building this uh, material. So I'm gonna select the eye, in my, you hit shift T, and that will bring up this assign new material options box. We'll go to surface, and let's just create a blend and uh, we can set the uh, color and the diffuse later, but I'm gonna jump right down to the, um, the bump map region of this, and that is right here. Um, and we'll click on the checker pattern here. Load up the file. And uh, there's a little tab up here at the right. We're gonna click on that file one, and then click on this folder icon to load up the texture. And here's my hex tile file that I created. Let's click open. And so this is only tiled one time, so it's way too large for us. So we need to edit the number of times that this texture actually repeats or tiles. So to get at that, we need to get to the place 2D texture node. And to get a, a better view of all of this, let's look, open up the hypershade. So if you go to Windows and then Render Editors, Hypershade. And just let's map that object that's selected. Let's select this eye and go to Graph Materials on Selected Objects. And we can zoom in. And you can see here's the 2D texture node that is defining how many times this, this repeats. I'm gonna move this off to the side a little bit. And uh, actually we can uh, move this down here. I'm gonna just focus on this attribute editor for now. 
And if you don't want this to disappear or go away while you're working, you can click this copy tab icon. Uh, this but that button will um, make this not go away if you deselect something or select something else. So I like to have that up at all times while I'm adjusting these patterns. And I'm going to use um, whole values here. Uh, let's change the repeat tile in U to uh, 4 and the repeat tile in V to 4 as well. And let's maybe make that uh, 8 for the, um, the V. So we still need to make it significantly uh, smaller, so let's increase that value. Let's go to 8 and 16. All right, so now we're getting somewhere. Let's do, go a little further. Let's go 16 and 32. And the bump is very strong, so let's go to the hypershade and uh, select that bump map here. <clears throat> and let's decrease the bump depth. Okay, and that's still a little large, so let's try 32 and 64. So now we're starting to uh, get the right size and scale for this insect eye. Now, in addition to um, just the bump depth, you can also play around with the filter and maybe smooth things out. If you increase that filter value to, let's say, 1.5, you'll see it, it smooths that out a little bit. And let's also try changing the color now and maybe add a reflection map to this to make it look like it's almost metallic. So let's go to the blend and change the, let's set the color and the diffuse to be um, black or zero and the specular color, we'll set that to be like a yellowish, maybe orange color. Okay, and now let's change. Let's add a reflection map, just a, a fake, a, a fake reflection. Go to reflected color, click on the checker pattern, and we're going to go to the environment texture and select environment ball. And I'm going to use just an equirectangular image that I took a couple years ago. And for the image, we'll place a file. And that file is also located in my source images folder. So I'm going to go up a directory and go into reflection maps and click open. So this is an equal rectangular image. It's twice as wide as it is tall. And now it's, it's quite uh, reflective. Let's try uh, putting that on both eyes and see how it looks. All right, so I like it, um, but I think I want to just experiment a little bit with the amount of reflection. So I'm going to uh, right click on that and go to material attributes and go to the blend uh, node and change the reflection value. And also the color um, plays a big role in how this looks as well. So let's just experiment with some of these colors. That's kind of interesting. I like the uh, the blue. And you can also actually affect the color of the reflection map itself. Just go into the file node and then go to color balance. And you could uh, add some color gain to it. Change that color gain to a specific color. There you have it. So that's how you could create a repeatable hex tile in Illustrator, bring it into Photoshop, create a texture for Maya, and then bring it into Maya. I hope this was helpful.